Hello and welcome to the second episode of SAP UI5 demos. In my previous demo, I showed you how to navigate from one view to another view uh, inside the shell but without using the routing feature. And in this demo, I'm going to show you how to use the routing feature to navigate from one page to another page and also how to dynamically change the URL. So let's get started. I'm using Eclipse and this is the same demo package that I used in my previous demo so we are going to change the index.html file and in this case we are going to introduce a new concept which is the router so let's go ahead and see how it works uh, before that let's do a quick run so that we can do a quick rec recap of what we did uh, in the previous demo so let's get the URL from here and let's go to the browser so this was the previous demo we can navigate from one page to another page but the URL doesn't change and let's start using the router so I'm in the index.html page and to use the router we need to load the library which is the routing library to do that we just write jQuery dot SAP dot require and we are going to place the library here and the library name is SAP dot UI dot core dot routing dot router so there's the first library and the second library that we are going to load uh, it is also a part of the routing library and its name is SAP dot UI dot core dot routing dot hash changer so hash changer is going to append the hash and change the URL and that way the page doesn't get refreshed but the URL does get gets changed right so let's start now with by creating our router so here we are going to write var o router you can name it anything you can name it uh, just router if you want to so and now we are going to create a new object of the router so we give new sap.ui.core.routing.router and in and here we are going to pass an array and the router is going to accept objects inside the array so we start creating the object this way and uh, we are going to write patterns and the rules for the router so what exactly are patterns and rules so when we click on this what's going to happen when we click on this what's going to happen so all those functionalities we are going to write it here so we go ahead and start writing a pattern this is standard you cannot write anything else here and we give null here well why we give null because in the first URL the first page that loads it doesn't have anything appended on the URL so that's the reason it's going to stay as null and the second thing is we are going to say which view we are going to load in this case it is going to be page one and then we need to say which view we are loading and this is going to be demo dot page one this is basically if you get inside demo and if you go to this view this is demo.page1 so that's the name of the view and next we are going to say what kind of view is that so that's view type and we already have written the type here it is going to be a JavaScript view we have written that here and now where do we want this view to load we want this view to load inside our shell so to do that we have to write target control always remember the the syntax and the naming convention it starts uh, with a lowercase and the second word starts with the uppercase right and the target control here we need to give the ID of the shell now if you, if you look into our shell we don't have an ID right so the way to give the ID is we give the ID of the shell over here that's going to be our first parameter and we can give it as shell ID you can give it anything you can just leave it as shell but because it's an ID I'm going to append ID to it so that's our shell ID 
and so our target control it's going to sit inside our shell and then we have to give target aggregation and target aggregation is going to be content it can be either content or it can be page so we are using content we are not using page and then we have clear target uh, what this means is when we navigate from here to here, it is going to clear this line, it is going to clear this view, and it's going to load the new view, right? So clear target, yes, we want to clear the target, and then the callback function. Now, callback function gets triggered when we when the URL changes. So the moment the URL changes, the callback function gets triggered. So here we can write, uh, basically we need to say that, uh, place whatever view is that inside the shell so get this shell and we need to set select select selected work set item and it is going to select this particular work set item in our case it's going to be the page one id so go ahead and just paste it here so that gets selected and we have another rule we have we have to write another rule which is for page 2 but we can just copy this and we can paste it here and this is going to be page 2 this is going to be our view 2 so it is going to be demo dot page 2 and the id is going to be page 2 id this is the same id what we use in our uh, navigation item which is page 2 id right so after we are done with that now in this case the pattern shouldn't be null because when we click on this we want the url to change right so we denote an array and if it gets an url which is page 2 it should call page 2 right and you can keep it as anything you can keep it as one two three so whenever it finds something like this in the URL, like you can say page one, two, three, four, whenever it finds anything like that, it is going to trigger this particular view. But for the case of simplicity, we are going to just keep it as page two and we'll see if we change this, what kind of changes it brings, right? So after we are done with that, next thing is we are going to register the router. Now, when you register the router, you can access this router from a different controller and that's the reason we need to register the router but if you think that you are never going to use this router in any of your controller you can simply ignore that uh, but i'm going to write it router dot register and we are just going to write as app uh, router this is going to be our app router and the next thing is we also want to initialize the router so you can write it by router dot initialize right all right so this is not important this is only important if you are going to use the router in your controller uh, we are not going to use it in the controller but I'll just keep it open so that anytime I need the router it is accessible right and then router dot initialize so this is all done and it is going to work but when the workset item gets selected now we don't need all these codes because if you're not using the router then when the workset item gets selected it is going to execute this and it's going to load the view right but in this case a router is going to take care of everything and when the URL changes it is automatically going to select that particular view so we can just delete all this part from here and here we we are going to use the uh, the hash changer library so let's create an instance of hash changer is equal to new sap.ui.core dot routing dot hash changer so we are instantiating this library and we created a new object and now we are going to use this object hash changer dot set hash 
and what we are going to we are going to use our router to get the URL and set the hash so this is our variable and we can use router dot get URL and this is going to be selected right so now the router is going to read the URL from here and it is going to set the hash and once the hash is set the router is going to perform its magic and it's going to load the view so that's all about this uh, let's go ahead and test this particular application so let's go to Mozilla I'm going to delete everything from here and now when I go to page 2 you see this page 2 gets appended and when I go to page 1 there is nothing right now let's say uh, I want to display page 2 when I write uh, profile right but when I hit enter it doesn't go to page 2 so if you want to rename your uh, URLs and make it much more user friendly you can definitely do that so in this case I'm going to write this in the pattern so in the URL if it finds profile it is going to load page 2 let's save this let's go to let's refresh this page and now when I write profile it navigates to page 2 and if I remove this it navigates to page 1 so that's all about routing and uh, in the next demo I'm going to show how to pass a parameter from page 1 to page 2 and how to get this router inside a controller so that your code doesn't look very messy and also we are going to clean up this particular script and we are going to place it into a new file all these things we are going to place it into uh, app.js file or component.js file where you do all your initialization so that basically helps you to keep the code clean and less clutter and uh, after a few days when you when you want to edit your code or write a new functionality it's easier to read right so that's all about uh, the routing I hope you understood and if there is anything that you didn't understand please uh, drop a comment and I'll make sure I'll try to explain that in a better way in the next demo uh, thanks for watching Thank you.